family one as you can see it's been painted um, bye long bye ago. uncle cats see you tomorrow uncle cats thank you Welcome to Uganda, home to more than 35 million people, with an average age of just 15 years old. With a population consisting of mostly youth and children, it's a country I just can't bear to ignore. To say the least, these children truly amaze me. They amaze me by their smiles, laughter, many talents, hard work, and especially by their overwhelming love they give, even to a stranger from abroad like me. With diseases like HIV, AIDS, malaria, typhoid, jiggers and other serious illnesses threatening their lives, I began wondering, what can I do? After my brief visit in 2009, I began thinking, if I could make a difference in one person's life, and I would try my best. Malaria is really bad. You become sick and it may lead to die. To die. <laughs> Malaria is bad. If it is not treated, it may become, it, ca it can bring you to die. It is too bad, and malaria is caused by mosquitoes. We get, we get malaria when we don't put on nets. Mosquito net. When we don't put on mosquito nets. When we did not put on mosquito nets, we, we become sick. With that in mind, it was mosquito net distribution and installation time. Sorting out all kinds of mosquito nets in the nearest school, we began making our way throughout the villages, visiting several village homes deep in the villages where there's no power and no running water. The routine was to greet the traditional greeting of the children and then of the guardian. Usually in most cases was the Jaja, the grandmother, who would be taking care of these children. Greeting her, asking her how she is, and her asking me, telling me how happy she is to see me. And thanking me for coming. The grandmother of 70 years old couldn't seem to express her thanks enough to me 
for bringing such simple items as mosquito uh. nets. Mm. With the help of the social worker from Eagles Wings Children's Village Orphanage, Alan Chisachi, we entered home by home, hammering nails into mud brick walls or tying strings up from rafters in the ceiling. Ceilings made of eucalyptus logs and iron sheets and sometimes thatched roof. Each home had a different challenge, but the most common challenge in every home was darkness. That Waswa Aloysius was was uh, was in the clinic yesterday. They tested his blood and he had malaria. He's on treatment now, though it wasn't serious malaria. But this year, he's been admitted more than four times because of malaria. So, yeah. So malaria is affecting this family a great this deal. After installing the mosquito nets for these children, I was in for another surprise. I didn't expect to meet their bedridden grandfather. It started with malaria affecting his body greatly. He, he, he got malaria and he, he wasn't able to be taken to, to the hospital for a long time. Then he suffered from uh, it, it was called cerebral malaria. It affected his, his brain. Mm. And so he became also paralyzed. Like you can see his hands, he can't touch. Mm. It's amazing he has a smile on his face because he's seen you, you have come. He's already been told that you've brought a mosquito net. Mm. So he's very happy for that. He has never slept in a mosquito net before. These two children are his grandchildren. Both parents died. Now he was the breadwinner at home. He's, he's now sick. He is the husband to Hadija. Now Hadija also has little strength to dig and to, to have some food for the family. That's the challenge that they still have. But it's a blessing to have a mosquito net in their house because it will help them to have a burden of having these children getting sick and frequently down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As saddening as, and as eye-opening as that experience was, it motivated me to keep pushing forward, to keep on visiting more homes and doing my very best to make some kind of impact on these people. I was even blessed with the rare opportunity to meet one of the boys that I sponsor and to meet his mother and to visit his home. Because you have done so little and some little ones sleep here. So this is your room, John. Yes. And you sleep down here? Yes. Okay. So you sleep alone in the room? Yes. Okay. So sometimes I sleep with that boy. Okay. Yes. Okay. So next we have to get you a mattress. Yes. We visited several village homes. 
And in addition to those homes, I also installed and distributed more than 72 mosquito nets to an orphanage of Eagle's Wings Children's Village. We had nothing that interfered with our lives, but when I was becoming, reaching six to like nine, nine, nine years, then uh, I got malaria, and malaria affected most of my parts, the legs, uh, I couldn't walk properly, as in I could not move a, a longer distance, I could move from here and there and I sit. The problem went on and I could only sit, they could just lift me to go where I had to go for short call. I had nothing in my mind about malaria, but malaria attacked me really. The legs became a, prob a big problem to me, and I had no, for sure, and I had never seen a mosquito net. I had never slept in a net, and nothing I had in my life that could protect me from mosquitoes. And you know, for us in Uganda, we have so many mosquitoes during the day and during at nights worse. After tending to the villages with mosquito nets, with the help of my brother Jovan, we visited a high school, Fisher Branch Kalagala High School, and handed out hundreds of nets to hundreds of students. With the mosquito net distribution project now complete, it was time to move on to the next project, covering jiggers. The pesky larvae that live in dusty dirt floors that can invade a child's feet and cause havoc. And even I, I got a jigger in my own foot after only a few short weeks in Uganda. But I was blessed to have a friend like Paul to safely and efficiently remove the jigger that had caused me some pain. With the blessing of a small shipment of shoes from the United States, the shoe project was able to be completed and was able to reach out to even more children. And I was given the opportunity to help fit the shoes for many children. It's a blessing to see the jigger flee become jigger free. In addition to the mosquito net and shoe projects, I was also given the opportunity to visit Bukandila Anglican Church. Link Parish to St. George's Wakefield in Clandeboy. And I was able, also able to assist in the construction of a high school library at Fisher Branch Kalagala High School and to construct some desks for the students of Eagles Wings High School and to do some painting as well. My latest passion has focused on the youth. 
I began a youth fellowship group that focuses on gathering together once every week to build a support group for all the youth in the community. We gather together to sing, praise, and to share words from the Bible. As we group together, the aim is to empower and encourage each other through bonding, through biblical values, and how to approach youth issues that the youth face. We gather in prayer, sing, worship, and discuss and finish every evening with a big Ugandan meal. It's been an amazing experience that I only pray, wish, and hope will continue. That's why I With these accomplishments in Uganda, I only hope that what I've done has made at least a small impact on the lives of these people. Umukuru <laughs> With approximately 600 mosquito nets distributed and installed throughout village homes and throughout an orphanage and approximately 300 pairs of shoes fitted on children. Mattresses delivered to children whom I sponsor. Helping Jovan get admitted into university and beginning a youth fellowship group aimed to empower the youth of Uganda. I believe now it's my time to say goodbye. But only for now.
It's almost 9.30 and I have a bat under my bed. Yes, I'm a son of 